There I am. There's a smudge on the screen and I really want to get it. I think I just made it worse. <laughs> What's up, sweethearts? Welcome back to my channel. This is called The Smile Inside Your Heart. My name is Anya, and I make health and healing content so you can liberate your mind, body, and soul. After about two, two and a half years in my gap era, I like to call it, I am finally emerging back into my field of neuroscience. <laughs> a lot of recent graduates can relate that getting your foot in to the door is probably the hardest part about graduating and starting your career. I have four networking strategies that will land you professional connections. If you're interested, keep following along and I'll tell you how I left this neurology conference with three business cards and two personally written contact information. <laughs> I really don't know what to call it. They just wrote it down for me by the time that I left the conference. the first step in emerging in your career is to surround yourself with people who are already doing it i.e going to a conference like i did going to a job fair going to back to your old university talking to your career center i heard about this conference through a mutual friend of my grandparents and it was such divine timing because later on she received an email saying that there was a neurology conference going on if we had never established that connection, she probably would have just discarded the email because she has no business being at a neurology conference. Make those connections, even if they seem far-fetched and even if they don't seem up your alley. When things start to align in ways that at first they didn't seem to make sense, but the pieces are starting to come together in a cohesive manner, that's your confirmation that you are on the right track. Okay. Step two is preparedness. You would not show up to an exam not having studied a single thing. So you would never want to show up to a professional event not knowing what's going on. You want to come prepared. So a couple days before the event, I did my research. I got a list of everyone who was going to be there, what their title is, and what they were going to be talking about. I went to their profile and I just read about who they are, their background, their educational experience, their professional experience. But you want to take it one step deeper. You're going to want to find something that's probably a little bit more unknown. It could be just insignificant to the greater scheme of their practice, but significant to them personally. Find that thing and keep it in the back of your mind for when you do talk to them and bring it up as a conversation starter. The conversation starters are probably the most awkward and the hardest to swing it in the direction that you're trying to go, which is what you can get out of them. So using this little intricate detail about them on a personal level is a great way to start a conversation with someone who you want to talk to on a professional level. The next step in preparedness is to come with a goal. My goal was to get four professional connections, and at least one one-on-one -on -one in-person meeting. Step three is to find commonalities. Find a commonality that creates a A to B connection with solely that person and yourself. The best way to do that is to utilize your hobbies and your interests outside of your professional endeavors. Now, if you had watched my video on how dancing helped me return to my innocence, I talked about our innocence package and the things that we come to earth with inherently loving and, and inherently drawn to, it's more like our repertoire of the things that we love without being told. Connect with these things. Here's why. A lot of times in life when people pick their professional endeavors, a lot of the influence on that decision comes from the need to survive and the need to have a job. However, our passions, which translate into our hobbies, are innately programmed into us, meaning that it doesn't matter how much money it makes you, none of that matters. We do it for the sake of love. You want to tap into that person's soft spot. If you can connect to that, that means you are seeing the person for who they are and not seeing them as their job title. So for me, I'm a STEM girly and I'm also a creative artsy girly. So those things are kind of like on two opposite ends of the spectrum, but I have love for both. The artsy girly in me 
loves health and wellness. She loves yoga. She loves art and painting. She loves holistic healing. Remember this about yourself when you are going in to this environment. So whenever a speaker would mention health, nutrition, diet, lifestyle, exercise, I was all ears and I was even taking notes. So actively listening and picking up on these clues will start to clear the path in which direction you should network. My fourth and final tip, and it's probably the most important, is don't be afraid to speak up. Here's another pro tip. Don't just ask questions for the sake of asking a question like, do you love this job? When did you start doing it? Tailor your questions to make it as relatable to your current situation as possible. Asking a question that reflects who you are allows the audience and the presenter to get an understanding of who they're talking to and how they can best serve them. I asked what I think probably was a groundbreaking question because so many people came up to me afterwards saying that they really loved my questions, that they really appreciate me even speaking up, and that they wanted to help me. The question that I asked the presenter was, hello, my name is Anya and I am recently emerging into the field of neuroscience. I wanted to know, and to the best of your knowledge, what area of neuroscience do you think has the most gaps in research? The central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system? That question shook the room. <laughs> Because even though he was doing something that I wasn't very interested in, I related the question that I asked him to my current situation and something that he would have knowledge on. And it also gave the audience an understanding of who I was. I am a person who was recently emerging in the field. I don't quite have my specialty. I want to know how I can do that through you. And because I spoke up and asked that one question, I got this contact. This is where I'm telling you that ease comes in and how your goals will just, you will start to be aligned with your goals so you don't have to work as hard because this person was so eager to talk to me because she loved that question so much. She just felt so called to me and be, it was because I had laid down these previous steps so that way she could resonate with the energy that I was putting out for her to take the initiative to come to me on her own. And there you have it. It is getting dark outside. That's it, sweethearts. Those are my four networking strategies that will be sure to land you professional connections in your career field. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video. It really helps my channel. We are growing and growing and growing every day, and I'm so happy about it. So thank you for being part of my calling. Your goals are secured. You just have to get in the right frequency and the right alignment to just meet up with them with ease. You got this, sweetheart. And as always, follow the smile inside your heart. Bye. I'm going to go eat dinner. <laughs>